Allah. The Prophet ﷺ dealt with these issues of racism 1400 years ago. When Abu Dhar anhu said to Bilal, Ya Ibn Sauda, you son of a black woman. And Bilal anhu got insulted and he went to the Prophet wasallam, And he said, O oh, Messenger of Allah, this is what Abu Dhar has said to me. And the Prophet wasallam called Abu Dhar and he said, Ya Abu Dhar, innaka imra'un fikal jahiliyyah. He said, O oh, Abu Dhar, you are a man who still has the traits of ignorance in him. The pre-Islamic traits. And then the Prophet Sallallahu said something really profound. He said, Abu Dhar, me Muhammad, I am equally the son of a black woman as I am the son of a white woman. Because the Prophet Sallallahu was breastfed by a black woman. The Prophet Sallallahu dealt with the issues of racism 1400 years ago. And you see how deeply they entrench in us today. How deeply they entrench. We don't need any interference from America or anybody else to destroy us and disunite us. We do a good job ourselves. You look at the Somalian issue before. Clans chopping up clans. Why? Because they gave preference to their clans over the La ilaha illallah. You look at the issue in Sudan. It's an issue of race. You look at the issue of Pakistan. Karachi wants to break away. Balochistan wants to break away. Part of Sarhad want to break away and the Kashmiris are speaking more about breaking away from Pakistan than actually liberating Makbuda Kashmir. Why? Because we bought into this. We bought into this Jahiliya. And what will you end up with? I'll tell you what you'll end up with. You'll end up with Bahrain and Qatar, Abu Dhabi and Dubai and Sharjah and Rasul Khaima that you speak bit from one side and you reach the other side. They have no power. And many of us call to the call of Jahiliya. The Prophet wasallam said to Abu Dhar, he said, Abu Dhar, innaka imran fikal Jahiliya. You are a man who is calling to the call of Jahiliya. And then in another narration, the Prophet wasallam said, listen to this. He said, whoever calls to the call of Jahiliya, he will be in the fire of Jahannam. And the Sahaba said, In Sama wa in Salah. And the Messenger of Allah said, In Sama wa in Salah. They said, Even if he prays and he fasts, the Prophet said, Even if he prays and he fasts. Because before Islam, racism was deeply entrenched in the Arabs. But after Islam, it was removed. You know, many of us, we are slaves to people's skin. We get overawed by the color of people's skin. Is that how shallow Muslims have become? You go look into to the rich, the Gulf countries. You have two men of equal education. One is white and the other is of a darker complexion. And the white person will get double the wages of the one with the darker complexion. Why? Because they're in awe of a man's jamri. They're in awe of the color of a man's skin. And that's the reality. And this was what the Prophet ﷺ came to remove. And by Allah, we break the ummah. How often you hear about youngsters, Bengalis fighting against Pakistanis. Pakistanis fighting against Somalians. Where did you get this from? Where did this come from? We generalize when we speak about Bengalis. We say Bengalis are all like this. Somalians are all like this. Pakistanis are all like this. Have you ever seen a Pakistani and a Bengali arguing? The Bengalis defending everything about Bangladesh. And the Pakistanis defending everything about Pakistan. And then when the Bengali goes home, he's from Selet. He's cussing the people of Dhaka. You have a Pakistani that defending Pakistan. And then when they go home, the Kashmiri is saying, Oh, yeah, yeah, Punjabi, sabbe seh. All the Punjabis are like this. The Punjabis are saying, All these Bhattans are like this. It never finishes. And then when it gets closer to home, you divide more. Then you divide on other issues. Yeah, all these, all these Raji are like this. And all these Gujars are like this. What are you doing? 
Because by Allah, Allah will not ask you. When you go in your grave, did you come from Pakistan, Bangladesh or Saudi Arabia? But he will ask you, did you divide the ummah by your words? I say this in no exaggeration. I fear that this talk is about Bilal anhu. But if Bilal was here today, I fear that there would be Muslim races towards him. Because it's so inherent in us. You have these huge masjids called masjid Bilal radiallahu anhu. And if Bilal radiallahu anhu came today, he couldn't even be a committee member. Because he doesn't come from the right place. He's not the right skin. And the Prophet sallallahu said, Laysa minna man qatala ala asabiyyatin. He is not from amongst us who fight for nationalism. And this is so inherent within us. And we divide the ummah. And in today's society, you know, seriously, how often do we see? They can't find somebody from the same bradri, from the same clan. So the sister becomes 40 years old and she's never married. What zulum could be greater than that? You've deprived her of her youth. Just because you couldn't find, if you found somebody naked, somebody pious, somebody of virtue, the Prophet said you should marry. And just because you couldn't find somebody of your same clan, you deprived a person, an individual of having a life, having a partner. And this is what this Qawmiyah has done to the Muslims. And this is something we need to break out of. All these generalizations, why can't you look at people's good virtues? Every comb has good pros and cons. Why can't you look at the positives? And when you see a person next time, judge him by his virtue. Judge him about his character. Not judge him by where he comes from. And that's what believers should be like.